Editorial design, and in particular magazines, have always fascinated me. There are a lot of things you need to learn to be good at designing contemporary, stylish magazine spreads. In this video, I will go through over 15 editorial terms and definitions you need to be familiar with if you are planning to design magazines. We will learn about kickers, stand firsts, bylines, pull quotes, and so much more by analyzing the work of my favorite editorial designers and art directors. I've collected some amazing examples for this tutorial, which I'm going to use to demonstrate and walk you through all the terms and definitions that's used for defining elements of a magazine spread. Now you can actually access this Mila note board. The link is in the description below and they all have links to the original artwork so you can find the artists. And I actually also highlighted three artists. Their portfolio links are also in the description below. Most of the examples I'm going to use in this video are from these three creative directors and editors, Kevin Fay, Mike Solita and Tanita Montgomery. Also to make this video a good reference to come back to, we have all the definitions listed in the description with the time tags so you can easily find them whenever you want to refresh your memory. And if that's not enough, we also created a PDF that you can download from our blog. Once again, the link for that is in the description below. But without any further delay, let's dive in straight into these beautiful magazine spreads. So first and foremost, you have to always think about the full spread when you are designing something for a magazine. So instead of paying attention to individual pages, you always consider the full spread. So when a reader opens up the magazine, they will look at both pages roughly at the same time. So their eye scans across very quickly. And even if the spread has an article on one side and an advert on the other side, there should still be some form of harmony or consistency between them. Now, of course, when it comes to an actual article, the first spread of the article is the invitation for the reader to start reading that. And you have to really make a good job in combining those two parts of the spread. So there's three main factors with which you can grab someone's attention for your spread. The first one is the layout or the composition of the spread. The second is the image that you use or the main image. And then the third one is the headline. These three are obviously very related to each other. So your composition relies on a good placement of the image and the headline or a good combination of them. But out of all the textual elements, the headline is definitely the most crucial one on your spread. It is quite common for headlines to use display type, which is not just a single font, but it's usually a custom designed font or hand lettering that really suits the theme of the article. The placement of the headline is usually on the top left side, but it can also be on the right. And some cases it can also be at the bottom or on the far left or far right. The reason why it's good to place it on the left side is because naturally we are starting to scan the spread from left to right and starting from the top left through the bottom right. That obviously can be different when you have your magazine in Arabic. You would probably have it mirrored and have things starting from the right. Headlines are usually really big. So in terms of the hierarchy within the composition, they should be really the dominant element. Definitely larger and more robust compared to the other textual elements within the spread. Now, in some cases, the headline itself can be using different formatting. Like here, the first word, yeah, is quite different even though it's using the same font family to the rest of the headline but this still forms a single unit when it's put together. When you have a short text above a headline we normally refer to that as the kicker. So again here this would be the kicker while below it this is the headline. And in this example, you can see that a font pairing can also work for a headline. So two very contrasting different fonts combined together still forms a good solid unit that can work as the headline. Now, usually just below the headline. So in this case, this section here is what we call the intro, stand first or deck. And this is usually covering in a nutshell what you're going to read about within the article. So it really entices you to start reading, but it also acts as a bridge between the headline and the body copy. 
So here's another example of the kicker, the headline, and below it, the intro, stand first or deck. Now, remember when I said the two sides of your spread should be considered as one unit, even though here we have a very distinct left and right side, there's still a lot of repetition that helps to unite them together. And unity in design is very important. So here we obviously see the color is used on the left and the right side. Then the same font is repeated again. And also in general, the shapes here on the left side are quite blocky and squared, which again is repeated here on the right side. Now, usually there's one element that comes straight after or attached to the intro. That's what we call the byline. It's just simply by and then the author's name. Now, these elements that we already covered are very common, but that's not to say that sometimes you might have to leave one of them out. Like in this design, I would say that this is the kicker, this is the headline, there's our byline, but there is no actual intro. We can consider this section here the intro, but it feels more like part of the body copy. And since we are talking about body copy, that is the largest textual element within your article. And here the readability is crucial. So you have to pay attention to the line length to make sure it's comfortable to read the text. So two long lines or two short ones are not ideal. You probably want to set it to around 45 to 80 characters in each line. And that's already with the spaces included. Now, when there is no intro, the first paragraph can be considered the lead. And notice how that is emphasized with the bold formatting. So we wanted flying cars. That really leads you into reading the rest of the copy. Now, another term that you might hear mentioned when it comes to the first paragraph or even the lead of an article is not graph or not graph, which is an editorial slang for a sentence that summarizes the rest of the article without giving out too much detail. So it's almost like the thesis of what you are going to read about. And some may argue that the lead and the not graph is exactly the same thing. Some people would say it's different, but generally within your first paragraph in the body copy, you can include something that's again, a little bit more elevated than the rest of the body copy. Now, another important thing that you need to keep in mind when you work with body copy is that you should have a standardized baseline throughout the whole spread, which means that the lines, even if they are in different colors, columns should match the position, so they should be aligned to each other. So here is another example, even though we have a gap here in this first column, so there's the gap between the paragraphs, we still have the alignment between the lines on the left side and on the right side. So that alignment is thanks to the baseline grid. This is a feature in InDesign that you can turn on within an individual text frame or even for the whole document. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now the next textual element in terms of hierarchy would be the subhead, which is usually within the body copy columns or frames. And these help to break up large chunks or blocks of text. So here, exercise, for example, diet, health tests, these would be considered subheads, but there can be many levels of subheads. So even your 20s could be one if the article then goes on and shows your 30s and 40s, but there can even be third and fourth level subheads like these, again, serves the same purpose, dividing or breaking up large chunk of text, but again, creating smaller divisions within already a unit that was created by the second level subhead. 
Structure and hierarchy is extremely important with magazine design because there's so many elements, so much information. You really need to guide your readers through the spread to make sure that they can find the relevant information. Because believe me, most readers are not reading in the order that you want them to read. They jump around, but by having these subheads, for example, you really give them entry points into different areas where they can go. And they might actually read eventually the whole article, but maybe not in the order that it was set up to be read. Now, another very important distinct textual element within a spread is the pull quote, which we can see two examples of in this spread. These are usually picked from the body copy and highlighted as like essential reads from the story and something that really is exciting and interesting. Once again, these are to draw attention to the article. So sometimes you might flick through the magazine and you see a pull quote that pulls you in to the article. They don't always have to be quotes, so it doesn't have to be that someone said. It can be just a summary or like an interesting fact. So it's really up to you as a designer to decide what should be highlighted in pull quotes. Here is another very elegant pull quote placed within the center of the page. And here is another very eye-catching, strong and bold pull quote within the spread. And of course, pull quotes doesn't always have to break up the structure of the body copy. They can actually be independent, so they can be on the side, like here, a very sophisticated, subtle way of placing the pull quote on the bottom left side. Now, another important part for giving structure to the magazine within a spread would be the header and footer. In the header, you would normally place something about the article, whether it's a recurring part of the magazine, and that indicates that this current article falls in that category, or it can be something more specific, like let's say the celebrity's name who is covered within that article. This is especially useful if you have multiple spreads and you want to make sure the reader knows that they are still reading about the same thing. The footer normally holds a little bit more information. One of the crucial elements is the folio or page number, which normally you would want to place on both sides, but if you only place it on one side, it's better to use the right side within the spread. The footer can hold additional information like the URL, website, or it can also be the date, and there can even be notes and references placed here. Now, in some instances, being playful with certain elements of your design can set the tone of the article or even the whole magazine. Shortlist is a really cool magazine here in the UK, and you can see how witty they are with their URL. So in this case, the footer is almost completely covered up. There's no page number visible, and also the URL I can't read. However, this is an element that repeats on the other spreads, and it doesn't always have to be fully visible. But once again, that is about breaking the rules when you know the rules. Another term that you might sometimes hear is running head or running feet. Once again, this is an element that carries on throughout a couple of pages to indicate a chapter or section within the magazine. So here in this case, that I could consider a running head because as we go along and go to the other page, we again have the same design there. Now, I hope you found this tutorial useful. This was only half of the definitions and terms that I wanted to cover. So we will continue in the next part coming soon to the channel. If you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe now and also hit the little bell icon to get notified. Thanks a lot for your attention and don't forget about all the useful stuff within the description. And also, please let me know in the comment section below if you have anything else to add to the things that I already covered and which one was your favorite spread design from the examples I've just shown. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.